um, a bit of Naples yellow into the mix now just to make a, a creamier look to this for the shadow side this is in shade so it's going to be a little bit darker and just allowing the texture of the board to show through as well that gives us quite a nice textural quality so this side of the building will be in shade and I'll work back into this uh, with a little violet or purple later just to make the shadows a little bit more pronounced as well well we've got this color the roadway and the wall coming down so this is a Naples yellow mix and that's the the, the wall where this uh, this building is on a slight hill by the look of my of my sketch with some steps we'll put that in we'll put the wall in and maybe the steps a little bit later on and the roadway coming around the corner that could go in using these same colors the road is quite likely to be made of stone same stone that the buildings are made of and so we can just drag a, a brush around quite a thin line until it comes to the corner then it goes around the corner and becomes apparently wider then back to a thin line again and these roads again don't don't try and you know we, we, do, we don't want to make these too regular it's not a, a motorway or a, a built-up road it's possibly even just a little track getting a bit more Naples yellow in as we get nearer to us and uh, take it down out of shot so that gives us a nice little bit of lead so the the eye is led around the image the eye will be led up to these buildings and re-establish those tones again you can see if you look the buildings it's sunk back this is a little bit like painting and decorating we've had the undercoat going on i'm going to put one of the top coats on and this is titanium white a little tiny touch of cadmium yellow in there and we'll put in where i want my my terracotta roof to be. I'm using a, a small number two round brush and eventually I will probably go down to a, a pointed watercolour brush for some of this. But for now the, the main thing is to keep the keep using a, as big a brush as you can all the way through otherwise you're going to get fiddly and I want to get this blocked in. I'm using the same colour as I started with for this which is the the uh, titanium white and a little cadmium yellow. I've added some cadmium red to this to make an orangey pink just to get the terracotta kind of colours put in to start with. And we'll add some to the rooftops here and there just to give us a nice warm look, terracotta kind of look. And some of these buildings peering through the trees here and there. So that's quite nice for that. I will. We'll allow all that to dry and uh, then work back in with windows and some detail. Right, as you can see, I've uh, masked the, the whole of the painting off with uh, kitchen roll and I've got a dilute mix of titanium white, uh, cadmium red and a little bit of magenta, quinacridone magenta. And I'm going to spatter, you can see, just flicking with a finger to get some of the distant poppies in and they're a pale red, uh, they're a pale cool red compared to the ones that are coming next and so I'm using magenta. Any of the blobs that go on that are too big I'll soak out with kitchen roll before we do the next step but this will look like distant poppies and we'll let that dry uh, now, take it off and see how it looks. Let's just do that before we decide. So we should have a, a spatter of, of distant poppies and I obviously need to lift out some of the larger bits we'll just take those out there we'll take these out we'll take that one out so before it dries we can amend but this looks quite like a uh, just poppies there in the distance I think we can leave that before we do the the closer one um, that's looking quite nice you know, a little spatter of uh, poppies there I'm not uh, worried too much about waiting for them to dry I'm just picking up some of the the color and making gradually some larger ones, uh, clumps of, of them if necessary. This spatter technique is, is very useful for this sort of thing and uh, uh, bluebells and snowdrops and daffodils, all kinds of flowers in the distance you can spatter as long as you mask things off. I'm using a, a, a coolish red for this if there is such a thing. It, it's a magenta mixed with my uh, cadmium red light and the flowers 
come nearer, I'm using uh, more cadmium red with a little tiny touch eventually of white and some Naples yellow in it. So this, these are actually going to get bigger. And eventually I'll work up to the ones that I've already rubbed out. So they'll be the brightest. And this is the foreground. And we'll put those in now. I'm using a little bit of white in the cadmium red. And we'll just put in, the, the trick is to not try and paint them as poppies. I'm going to work in and put in some of the centers, the dark centers, shortly. And they will look like poppies because of the, the shapes. But we must remember to cover most of the areas that I've rubbed out. Otherwise we're going to have a light green surrounding the reds, which would look a little bit suspicious. Um, while we've got the colour out and it's still wet, I'm going to put some shadow on. The sun's coming down across this way, we can tell by the buildings. So some of the petals on one side and underneath might have a darker red and I'm using the magenta for that. And uh, just to define some, some of them and make them different shapes, we can even actually start to imply the shapes of petals in some of these with a the handle of the brush as well. And then I'm going to just wait for this to dry and then we'll put in some of the, the centres and a hint here and there of, of some additional stalks. Okay, the building's dry. I'm going to work back into the building and just put the hints of some shadow in down one side uh, where, the, where the, the tower is underneath the eaves here. A uh, little violet made with magenta ultramarine, a little bit of uh, titanium white. And we'll use this colour to put in some of the hints of shadows around where the windows are as well. And down here on the wall, just set the, the buildings in the environment, a few little shadows on the ground down here. This all helps to stabilise the image. And the hints of some uh, little windows there as well, just to pick out some detail. And then we're down to do the, the poppies, the darks on the poppies. And uh, that is burnt sienna and ultramarine. And the poppies just put some little touches in and suddenly, look, they become poppies. They weren't necessarily there before. But putting a, a, a centre in just here and there, not all of them, because that would, again, be too much of a, of a cliché. And they're not all looking at us anyway. So we have to be a bit careful with this. And some real darks, I've added sap green. We'll put some darks around some of the nearer ones just to define the shapes a little more. And then we'll sit back and see if we need to do anything else. But I reckon that this is about there and it's looking good, looking the way I wanted it to. And it's the way I remember it. One of the most difficult things when you're painting is knowing when to stop. And my advice is always to stop before you think you've finished. And I suppose I'm actually ignoring my own advice now, but I'm just putting some lights on, on the, uh, the poppies here and there down in the foreground just to show the odd light um, petal. And as I say, this is going to be overworked if I'm not careful. And so I'm going to um, say that that's finished now. And uh, I think it's best to stop before you overwork a painting and you can always come back to it. But I quite like the look of that. I think that's followed through from the sketch quite nicely. Now available to buy. Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The DVD of today's workshop and the book that accompanies this series are now available to order from the Painting and Drawing Channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.